Navigating Microsoft Publisher 2016. In the last lesson, we created a blank publication. For this lesson, we're going to keep the blank publication open and use it to show you how to navigate the Publisher 2016 interface. At the very top of the Publisher 2016 window, you'll see the title bar. The title bar is helpful to be able to find because it shows you the name of the publication that you currently have open. By default, the name of a new publication is Publication 1. For each additional new publication that you open, the name increases by one digit, Publication 2, Publication 3, and so on. If you start Microsoft Publisher by clicking on an already existing publication on your computer, it will open automatically and your publication will be displayed in the Microsoft Publisher window. To the right of the publication name, you'll see the Help button. It looks like a question mark. You'll also see the standard buttons that allow you to minimize, maximize, or X out of the window. To the far left, you'll see an icon of a disk, followed by other buttons. The disk icon, when clicked, will save your file with its current name in its current location. To the right of the disk, you have the undo and redo buttons. You can also see the touch or mouse mode button and the quick access toolbar. We'll talk about all these things later in this lesson and throughout the course. First, let's learn more about navigating through Publisher's interface. When you open a publication, you will see the Publisher 2016 interface. Learning how to navigate the interface will make using Publisher a lot easier. You'll find the ribbon directly below the title bar. The ribbon is organized into tabs, then groups, and then finally tools and commands. The tabs are located at the top of the ribbon. The tabs in Publisher 2016 are File, Home, Insert, Page Design, Mailings, Review, and View. The name of the tab gives you a general idea as to what groups and tools you'll find under that tab. For example, the Insert tab contains tools that allow you to insert things into your publication. Let's click on the Insert tab. Each tab is broken down into groups. The groups contain tools and commands that relate to the name of the group. The Illustrations group is shown here. This group contains tools to insert illustrations into your publication. The Backstage view is located under the File tab on the ribbon. When you click on the File tab, this is what you'll see. The Backstage view allows you to manage your publication as a whole publication, while the other tabs on the ribbon allow you to manage parts such as illustrations, font, or page design, the Backstage view allows you to work with the publication in its entirety. You can save the publication, open a new or existing publication, or print the publication. You can also share or export it. In addition, you can also go to the Backstage view to set your preferences for Publisher 2016. We will learn about these things later in the course. For now, click the arrow in the top left corner to return to the main Publisher window. The Page Navigator is shown by default on the left-hand side of Microsoft Publisher 2016 whenever you open a publication. The Page Navigator shows you thumbnails of all the pages in your file. For example, if you had a multi-page newsletter, the Page Navigator would show you thumbnails of each page. You can use this to easily navigate from page to page. You can click on a thumbnail to open it in the workspace area. You can also right-click on a page to do a variety of tasks quickly and easily. When you right-click on the page in the Page Navigator, the following context menu appears. You can insert a new page. You can insert a duplicate page. Delete the page. Move the page up or down. Make page 1, page 3, for example. Rename the page. Work with the page numbers. Or create a master page. You can also view two pages at a time. We'll learn about all these things in later lessons. For now, right click on it and click on insert page. You'll see this dialog box. Type in the number of new pages you want to create. Then decide if you want them to come before the current page or after. You can also choose to insert blank pages, pages with one text box on each, or duplicate all objects on a certain page number. Make sure you type in the page number. We're going to insert one blank page after our current page. When you're finished, click on OK. 
The status bar is located at the bottom of the Microsoft Publisher 2016 screen. By default, it shows you what page you're viewing and how many total pages exist in your file. You can also use it to change views and zoom in or out of your publications. Let's look at the far left corner of the status bar beneath the page navigator. On the far left, you can see what page you currently have displayed in the work area. The work area is located below the ribbon and is where your page is displayed as you work on it. You can see we have page 2 displayed in the work area. To the right of the page number, you'll see an arrow that looks like a mouse cursor. If you select an object on your page in the work area, clicking on the arrow will display its position on the page. When you click on the arrow, you'll see this pop-up box. When you click on the options in this window, you can alter image sizes and locations. You can play with these different options to get a better feel for what they do. X and Y are the coordinates on the screen where the image or text box appears. Adjusting these will move the image on the page. The next buttons are adjusting the image width, adjusting the height, adjusting the rotation. This part here adjusts the spacing across a word, line or column of text. The higher the percentage, the more spacing. This is called tracking. The next one is called text scaling and allows you to shrink or stretch the width of the text characters. And the final one is called kerning, which is the space between two letters. If you go to the right side of the status bar, you'll see buttons to change views, as well as a slider to zoom in or out on the page in the work area. Single page is the default view. You can see it's shaded here, which means it's our current view. To the right of single page is two page spread, which will show two pages in the work area. To adjust to zoom, simply move the slider to the left to decrease zoom, or to the right to increase it. As with all Microsoft Office programs, the Quick Access Toolbar is located at the top left of the screen. It looks like this. The Quick Access Toolbar gives you fast access to the tools that you use the most. For example, if you use a certain tool a lot, such as the Cut tool, you can add that to the Quick Access Toolbar rather than having to use the ribbon each time. In other words, you can choose which tools appear in the toolbar. By default, our Quick Access Toolbar displays shortcuts to these tools and features. Save, Undo, Redo. These are the shortcuts that appear by default. However, you can customise the Quick Access Toolbar and add shortcuts so the tools you need appear there for easy access. To customise the Quick Access Toolbar, click the drop-down menu to the right of the toolbar, which looks like this. When you click on it, you will see a drop-down list. Click on the tools you'd like to add to the Quick Access Toolbar. The tools that have a check mark beside them are the tools that already appear on the toolbar. By the same token, when you click on a shortcut, it will put a check mark beside it, letting you know that it appears on the Quick Access Toolbar. If you want to add a shortcut for a tool that doesn't appear on the drop-down list, go to the ribbon, and then follow these steps. Find the tool that you want to add. Right click on the tool. In this example, we're going to go to the Insert tab and then go to Pictures. Right click on the Pictures button here. Then click on Add to Quick Access Toolbar. It now appears in the Quick Access Toolbar here. If you want to move a command button in the toolbar to a different location or group it with other buttons on the toolbar, click the drop down menu on the right side of the Quick Access Toolbar. Select More Commands. You'll then see this dialog box. In the right column, you can see everything that already appears on the Quick Access Toolbar, and in the order that the shortcuts appear. If you want to reorder the tools, click on a tool, and then use the arrows to move it up or down. If you want to group buttons together on the Quick Access Toolbar, you can add vertical separators. To do this, select the tool for which you want to appear above the separator. We'll select Insert Picture. Now click on Separator on the list on the left, then click on the Add button. In addition to a separator, you can also add any of the tools that appear in the column on the left to the Quick Access Toolbar. Simply click on the tool to select it, then click on the Add button. To remove shortcuts from the Quick Access Toolbar, select the shortcut in the right column, then click on Remove. 
Click the OK button when you're finished. Once you're done creating your publication, it's time to save it. To save it, click on the File tab. There are two ways to save a publication. You can click Save on the left to save the publication under the same file name that it already has if it's an existing file. It will also save it under the same format and in the same location. If your publication's name is mine and you have it saved in My Documents in the .pub format, Publisher will keep the same file name, the same .pub format and save it in My Documents. You can also click Save As. When you click Save As, you can change the publication's name, format and the location where it's saved. Let's click on Save As. First, choose where you want to save the file. You can save it to OneDrive, which is Microsoft's cloud storage. You can save it to this PC or your computer. You can add a place, such as SharePoint. Let's choose this PC. As you can see, you can now choose a location on your computer. You can choose one of the most recently used folders or click on the Browse button to locate the location where you want to save the publication. Now, select a location on your computer. Type in a file name in the file name field. Then select a format type for your publication from the Save As Type drop down menu. The top entry, Publisher Files, is probably the most common format. This format allows you to edit, open, and work on your publisher file. However, you can also save your publication as a PDF, JPEG, Word file, and much more. Click the Save button when you're finished. To close a publication, you can do two things. You can click on the X at the top right of the publisher window, or you can go to the Backstage view, and then click Close on the left here. There may be times when using Publisher 2016 that you forget how to do something or need assistance when completing a task. To access the help files in Publisher 2016, click the question mark symbol at the top right hand side of the screen, which is this one here. When you click on Help, you'll see this window open. You can search Publisher's online help by entering what you need help with in the search box, or you can choose a popular search topic. Click the X at the top right of this screen here to close help.